What's up guys? Sorry it's been so long since I've made a video. We uh, made a move from the country into the city. Uh, it was roughly September when we moved in and I was having some issues with my uh, new setup that I got. I was working on switching from the ASI 294MC Pro over to the ASI 1600MM Pro and I took two pictures at the old house and they both turned out amazing and then when I got here I had probably a couple days of uh, clear skies before all the clouds came in and I was out for probably like four nights in a row and not thinking anything about it I didn't check any of my data I just shot for four nights straight thought I had everything good well what ended up happening is I put in a uh, filter wheel, the ZWO uh, 7x2 filter wheel and was trying to shoot in narrowband for the first time and I had all these weird gradients and I wasn't sure what was going on and at my house now uh, I have a huge street light on the corner so I was thinking maybe that was causing an issue but I didn't think so because it's weird to have gradient issues pointing away from a street light and other people are in borderline sky zones with no big uh, no big deal so um, the clouds started setting in and I really didn't get to touch my scope for many months I mean I it was up until probably a month ago maybe a month and a half ago I was finally able to start getting back out and um, come to find out the mounting holes for uh, where you can screw your camera straight to the filter wheel was uh, somewhat open. <laughs> I didn't realize that they guess I guess that they were open. Uh, you know, not having a camera screwed to it and the way I had it set up. So basically, there was light leaking in all the way around uh, the camera. So I ended up screwing the camera to the filter wheel because it has bigger uh, bigger holes and smaller holes and uh, I screwed into the smaller ones and then covered up the bigger ones with tape just to kind of test it I guess and see and uh, I've been out probably seven or eight times now and so far everything seems to be working really well um, I can show you two of my pictures that I did uh, back at the old house before we, right before we moved um, real quick here so this first picture I shot was of the cocoon nebula and I didn't have a clue what I was doing um, I was trying to shoot in LRGB uh, I went ahead and did 240 uh, 120 second shots so 242 minute shots and I went ahead and did 22 minute shots of RGB um, and then processed it and I was extremely happy with how everything turned out I thought it was really easy to process um, you know the data was a lot clearer than what I was used to and this was shot on my um, GSO RC6 telescope and I was blown away I was so happy with it and uh, I didn't have a clue and, and maybe you guys can tell me what you think or what you guys do how much time do you put into RGB versus uh, like a luminance data you know if you're gonna shoot LRGB you know from what I've heard you always want to do a lot more luminance it seems like to bring out the, the details but uh, you know tell me what you guys think the second image I shot was of the Pac-Man Nebula and I kind of followed the same thing there. I did uh, 22 minute shots of RGB and then I got out 180 uh, shots of 2 minutes for luminance. And that was on the um, Skywatcher Pro ED80. Um, and again, I just... The colors are amazing. I, I like that it has... Uh, you know more of a nice pink tone to the hydrogen and not you know the crispy salmon color <laughs> I guess I'd like to call it you know you kind of fight sometimes you get some 
super deep reds or some of that stuff, which is not bad, but I, I always kind of wanted that nice pink color. I, I'm really happy with it. So in the middle of all the clouds, I went ahead and shot the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. Uh, that was December 20th, uh, 2020. And I shot that with the uh, Skywatcher 80 millimeter refractor. So not near close enough, but it actually worked out pretty well with a, a three times Barlow on it and stuff. I could actually, you know, see okay, good enough. And um, I don't do much planetary, so it was a challenge. But it was definitely fun to get out and uh, get an image of it. Um, you know, doesn't happen very often, so yeah, it was good. So eventually, I'll uh, I'll get a big boy scope and try to get some some better uh, planetary images. So finally, after a couple of months, uh, at the first of March, I was able to get out and do my first narrow band project. Uh, I had to go with the Rosette Nebula. I was trying to squeeze in anything I could, uh, you know, because we're getting into galaxy season. So I was having to piece stuff together overnight, you know, half half uh, Rosette Nebula during the night, and then half galaxy, and then so it, it took. I think we had about a six day stretch of clear nights every single night. So I put three to four hours in every single night, and then uh, was able to put it all together. So I have a uh, image that I did in a Hubble palette in an SHO, and I also did it in HOO, um, and I am extremely happy with how they both turned out. The, the, the processing was just so easy, so amazing. Uh, definitely easier than RGB, a lot less noise. Uh, it was just awesome. I was able to get about 17 hours on the target, and uh, you know I'll show you both of these here. They're just, they're awesome. So uh, I cannot wait to get on some more uh, narrowband targets. I know the uh, Eagle Nebula and the Lagoon Nebula are starting to, to rise uh, probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I'm already looking that way. I'll probably be getting off galaxies quicker than, <laughs> than not and just to try to go go get on the the narrow band uh, train here I guess you could say one more that I was able to get done was in LRGB again and I shot uh, M106 so this is one galaxy that I love to shoot I, I shot it last year and was just blown away by it I, I think it's pretty cool uh, so I went ahead and went after it again this year in LRGB and again I'm I'm just happy with it I, I love I love this uh, the monochrome camera, you know, I, I love going from uh, OSC to, to monochrome. Um, not to say it's not a lot more work because it is. It's definitely it takes a lot more time, I guess, in a sense, in processing. Uh, you know, because you're processing instead of maybe one image, you're processing four images or five images if you do like an HA LRGB, um, but it gets better after you figure it out it just takes longer and then how you're going to combine all the images and when to combine them and when to do this and when, I mean it's a, it's definitely a different ball game and uh, I'm trying to figure it all out <laughs> I'm watching as many videos as I can and, and you know read as many articles as I can and stuff like that just to try and see what's the best way to do what but just like anything else as soon as you uh, get into something new it just takes a while and You'll, you'll figure it out eventually with enough uh, research and trial and error. So I've started one of my favorite projects that I do every year and will probably continue to do every year. It's uh, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Uh, I'm pretty excited to shoot this with a monochrome camera and try to capture LRGB data on it. And to see the difference between that and what I was doing with my uh, ASI 294 MC Pro. I think it'll be probably a pretty big difference. Maybe not. Um, I, I see the colors being maybe a little bit more vibrant and easier to pull out. So I, I'm really excited to see how this is turning out. Uh, two nights ago, I shot luminance all night long. I think I had about 460 subs. I figured I'd try something a little bit different this time. I've been shooting three-minute subs with LRGB 
and I went ahead and went down to about a 60 second sub. I'm hoping that's going to help out with uh, some of the light pollution and some of the gradients in the image. Uh, you know, they're kind of noisy. Um, and maybe it's not a big deal. I mean, I, I think if you sync enough integration time into it, it it's not going to matter as much. But um, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, it'll help with the background of the image and make it look a little smoother. Um, so I had about 460-ish images of uh, luminance from two nights ago and then I was able to get uh, 60 60 second images of RGB last night at least I think I did the clouds started to roll in about 1 a.m. so I'm waiting and I think the clouds are gonna roll out at about 1 a.m. this morning so I'm hoping to fire my my rig back up and maybe gather a little bit more RGB um, so I hope it turns out really well guys I can't wait to share it with you. I really hope you guys are doing well. Um, hopefully, I'll have some more time here soon, some more clear skies, and we can uh, make a couple more videos. I really have fun doing this and uh, you know, sharing my experience with you guys. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and I appreciate all the support.